Are you there? Yeah. Let's read all together verses 1 and 2. Read, read. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Okay, we have read Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. It says there, Cast thy bread. Cast means throw. Itapon, ama? Okay, itapon, let go. Let loose. Give. This is from a man who is filled with wisdom in the power of the Holy Spirit and his name was King Solomon. He is giving his advice to us. And he said, cast, give, let go, throw. What is there to throw? Thy bread. Not thy neighbor's bread, but your bread. Okay? And what comes next? Throw your bread upon the waters. Who has experienced this? Throwing your bread, your sandwich, or whatever bread you have into uh, malapit dito na Pasig River. Okay? Who has experienced that? And then it says there, if you do that, thou shalt find it after many days. So for example, you throw hamburger. Jollibee. Hamburger from Jollibee, you threw it into the Pasig River and you waited for 10 days, you return and then you find it again. Of course, <laughs> no one has tried that. What, will you, what, what do you think will happen if you do that? Will you be able to find that hamburger? No. It's impossible. Okay? How come this verse is saying that if you throw the bread, you will find it after many days? It's not actually literal interpretation. Let's talk about, let's uh, define what bread means. Bread, bread actually means life. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ said, John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Bread symbolizes life. Even to us physically, bread gives us life. Gives us energy. So it is saying, cast throw your life. Throw your life. Give your life. Where? Upon the waters. Water there does not, is not, should not be interpreted in its literal sense. The Bible interprets itself. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17 while holding on to that verse. Revelation chapter 17 verse 15. Let's find out the meaning of the waters. Are you there? Verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the poor seated are, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Let's combine the meaning. Cast thy bread. Give thy bread, give thy life, throw your life upon the peoples. Throw your life upon the nations. Throw, give your life unto 195 nations. That is the meaning of waters. People, multitude, nations, and tongues. Tongues 
meaning people who speak different languages. And I'm so thankful that it, today we have someone who is doing this. Even the person of Sister Ashley. He has casted, he has thrown his life onto a town that she does not know. For the people, for the Filipino people. And that is for the gospel's sake. We are commanded to cast our light upon these nations, upon not just one nation, but 195 nations. That is why the Lord Jesus said, Go ye and teach all nations. Acts 1 8, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then thou shalt be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on to the uttermost part of the earth. In our part, we are already done. We are through with Samaria because we came from Samar. <laughs> Samar area. Uh, Samaria. Samaria. Okay, we're finished in Samaria. Okay? We were able to give our life four years in Samar, preaching the gospel there. Okay, we're done, and now we're going to Judea. Okay, so we pray that you will help and partner with us. Church, cast your life. Give your life. If you give your life for the sake of the ministry, it says there, For thou shalt find it after many days. Meaning, what you have thrown, what you have given, you have given your life, you have given your resources, you have given your treasure, mind you, the Bible says you will find it after many days. You will find it. And God does not lie. Amen. God is not a God. He, he could not, that's the thing that He cannot do. Yeah, there's one thing that God cannot do. And that is, He cannot lie. Amen. He will not lie. He could not lie. That's why if you give your life, you will be able to find it. Meaning, you will be able to find the meaning of life. You will have a fulfilled life serving the people, serving different countries. I don't know about you. Where are you going to throw your life? There are throwing of life to some things that has no eternal value. Some throw their life into... Yes, you are. You know, Facebook all the time, wasting time. There are so much, there are so many people in need of the gospel. And some are throwing their their life into the tennis race 6, e, 6 p.m. until 10, until 11, watching TV. That's really throwing life. But it's a wasted way. It's, it's, a, it's a pro that has no, you know, it's just a waste. It has no eternal value. King Solomon is saying, you want to be wise. I want, I'm giving you an advice. I'm giving you a command. Give your life for the people. To the nations. I don't know. I'm hoping that there will be many of from this church who will become pastors and missionaries who will give their life for the sake of the gospel that people, more people, will know Christ. If you do not do that, you will not find life. You see, let's go back. Let's go to John chapter 12. While holding your hand on that, John chapter 12, verse 23 and 24 and 25. Throwing our life, it means you have to die to yourself. If you do not, you will remain alone. The Lord Jesus Christ said in verse 23, 
chapter 12 of John, he says, he said, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Only one person died, and what is what was the fruit? Who are the fruits? Christians. Who died? The Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the fruits. In this room, your pastor died to himself, to his own ambitions. For what purpose? That he may serve you, that he may give his life for you, preaching the gospel to you. That's why he has fruits. You will be his fruits, and you are his fruits. But if Pastor Jeremiah did not die to himself, where are you now? Or perhaps you will say, somebody, God will use somebody. Yes, God will use somebody. But that somebody will have to die to himself also to bring the word to you, to serve you, right? Only a dead person can have fruits. If you do not die to yourself, you will not have fruits any fruit you will abide alone the lord jesus christ is the best example and being christians we have to be like him we have to die to ourselves many of our forefathers our christian early christian fathers they died for the sake of the gospel that's why christianity abounded and Christianity came to the Philippines. Without shedding of blood, there will be no Christians in the Philippines. Many missionaries, American missionaries, leave their homes, die to themselves, to their own ambition. Santa Mesa, Pastor Boyd Lyons, and Bethany, the Wesley, in Takloban, Pastor Wee, Howard Wee, from American missionaries coming over to the Philippines. They leave their home, they leave the comfort zone to be with us, to minister unto us, to bring the gospel to us. And that is why you can see now many Baptist churches all over the Philippines. Because they died to themselves. If they had not died, nasan pa kaya tayo ngayon? Wala. Okay? In the same way, we are to die to ourselves. Because unless we die, we will remain alone. You don't want to remain alone. God is requiring fruits for every Christian. Let me ask you, a question. In this time, for example, the Lord will come now and the Lord will be asking. If the question of the Lord will be, did you bring somebody to the church? Were you able to Bible study that person? Can you raise, can you point some person in this room that God allowed you to minister? Do you have somebody whom you are discipling? I mean, the point is, do you have a group? If God will come, will you be able to say, by the grace of God, I was able to bring sister blah blah blah. By the grace of God, I was able to disciple sister 
or brother, if God will come now, He is going to ask for fruits, not just inward fruits. Okay? There will be fruits. Even He was looking for the fig tree, He was asking for the fruit in that fig tree. And the fig tree did not give any fruit, and He cursed it. You know, He gave His life. Not for nothing. Okay? Giving his life to you is an investment. Investment means there must be an ROI. Return of investment. If he gave his life to you, he must have some he must he must have some return from you. Thank you, Dian Kubanate. Amen. We have to die for ourselves. Right. Maybe some of you are uh, riding jeepneys or taxi. We're able to give trucks to them. Okay? Who's riding taxi every day? Or jeepney? Maybe, or, or bus? O baka, maybe you're not giving because you're not yet dead to yourself. I hope you are already dead to yourself. It's easy to give tracts. And if you're riding in a taxi, it's easy to share the gospel. Whatever vehicle we ride on, we share the gospel. Or at least man lang makapagbigay ng tracts. Kung papunta kami dito, that's the first time that I encountered, he doesn't want to talk about the gospel. He don't talk to me, galit na galit eh. Okay? Don't talk to me about that. Don't talk to me. He is, was so full of hatred. It's because he has some family problems that he doesn't believe God exists, doesn't believe that there is a soul, he doesn't believe that the Bible is true. Okay, keep, I was keep on, I, I keep on talking, but he doesn't want me to talk. So I, I shut up. Okay? And someday, he will face me. Okay? He will face me someday. And I will be a witness. If he will ask, is there somebody that God used to share the gospel? I will say, I, will say, I am. But he did not listen. Wherever you are, in the office, are you sharing the gospel? You know, when I was in FEU as a student, somebody shared the gospel to me, do one-on-one -on -one Bible study. Once a week we meet. He was a PLDP engineer. He would leave office and do under time. If I'm not available at a convenient time and he still has a work, he would take an under time or leave of absence just to meet me. Doesn't matter to him if his salary will be deducted. And I'm so thankful for that person. Once a week we meet. If I say, I'm not available, he would say, what about Tuesday? I'm not available. What about Wednesday? I'm not available. What about Thursday? And he will corner me into a schedule that, okay, okay, I'll give you one hour. Masyadong makulit. Meron ba kayong kinukulit? Okay? Meron ba kayong kinukulit para sa Bible study? You know, it takes a person who is dead to himself, somebody who is committed for the Lord to do that. And he does not know that I am already a missionary. He, he does not know. We haven't met for so many years. We have no contact. But you know, I'm just thankful for that person. I hope you will have fruits also. Okay? In your workplace. I don't know what you are doing with your office mates. Or maybe you're afraid. 
you know, if you do, if you you are afraid, you're not dead to yourself yet, and you will remain alone. See, if you want to have a fulfilled life, a good life, read verse 25. It says there, He that loveth his life shall lose it. If you love yourself too much, that you care for reputation, your reputation, if you love yourself too much, that you don't go out so winning because you're, you might get uh, dark, your skin might get darkened, <laughs> or your makeup might, you know, go down, go down, melt, or you might be afraid of what people would say to you, you know, you will lose life. Okay? But, it says there, He that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If you are a kind of person who doesn't care about how you look, or what other people would say, then you will find life. You will find life. You have to die to yourself. You have to give your life away. And I have my own ambition. I wanted to become a lawyer. I finished law school by the grace of God. But this verse, the whole chapter in the Justice, I was able to read that. And this book changed the direction, the course of my life. I was bent on becoming a mayor in our town. That's my ambition. That's why I study, 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 study all my life. I just finished studying 27 years old. Okay, all the study. But you know, I just thank the Lord for, for this verse or for this book. It changed the direction of my life. Paul um, King Solomon said, I made me gardens, I made me pools. I made me this, blah, blah, blah. I painted my, planted my vineyards, and his house was, you know, 13 years, 11 years in the making. And yes, he was very intelligent, very rich. But the end of his life, he would, if you will read his book, he keeps on saying, but all is vanity, all is vanity, all is vanity, vanity, and vanity. And then the conclusion, this is the whole conclusion, the whole matter, fear God and obey His commandments. You know, after I read that, but this person is real. Totoo itong tao na ito. Ang kanyang na-experensyahan, totoo. Nakamtan niya na lahat, he had it all. But he keep on saying, vanity. And me, I was looking for those things that he had already. And I said, if I continue to look for these things that this man had, then I don't want to be on that conclusion that at the end of my life, I would be saying, vanity. I don't want to be a fool. So I said, I'm going to have a new phase of life, a new direction that I called my mother. Ma, I na po ako magtutuloy. Magpikwit na ako sa law school. I was already third year. But my mother said, son, I just finished it until four years. Until the fourth year. So I finished. And my relatives would be saying, I'm like that. You know, now I'm a, I pastored, I pastored in Samar, and my relatives would be saying, Meron ako, uh, I'm, I'm insane. May sira daw ako. Okay, but they're not Christians, some of them. That's why I said, I understand where they are coming from. It doesn't matter what they say, 
But now I know the direction of my life. I am going to serve God. I am going to give my life away. I want to have a fulfilled life that when I die, before I close my eyes, there will be a quick review of my life. And then, from that quick review, I will be saying, my life was not useless. I give it. I give it for others. I did die that others believe. Okay, alam nyo po, yan po ang maganda sa buhay. That you care for others. There was this man, a photographer, I don't know if you are familiar with him. Um, I forgot the name. Ako ko lang alam nyo yung pangalan niya. He was a photographer, a very good photographer. He had this scene in Africa, Sudan, there was a child, the child was very thin because of the famine in Africa and butot balat na lang yung bata. Okay, uh, was a woman, babae, uh, and then there was a vulture, a bird on the back of that child. And the child was very thin and the child was about to die and the vulture was waiting for that child to die and after that the bird will eat the child and then this man he was taking that picture and you know what happened he became famous because of that picture Interview here, interview there. He won the Pulitzer Award. So many awards. People made an interview with him. But one interview, there was somebody, a reporter, who interviewed him and asked him, Sir, you saw the child. You saw the bird. What have you done? Did you help the child? Did you give the child a food? Or did you bring the child to the nearest orphanage? Or did you show away that bird? And he had no answer. After three months, his body was found in his own car or he committed suicide. And there was a note, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I did nothing. Christians, perhaps sometimes we are like that. There are people every day dying and their soul are going to hell what are we doing? Are we doing something? People are hungry. They are spiritually hungry for the Word of God. But what are we doing? Are we going to be like that photographer? You know why, was he not, why that photographer was not able to help the child? Because he was so full of himself. He was thinking about the fame, the reward, the awards that he could get. That, those are the things that occupy his mind that he forgot helping the child. Punong-puno siya sa sarili niya. Okay, sisikat ako, sisikat ako. Sisikat ako. Punong-puno siya sa sarili niya na nakalimutan niya na tulungan yung bata. Iba tayo din, punong-puno tayo sa ating mga sarili. Sariling schedule, I'm going to work. May schedule ako, may pupunta na ako, may pupunta na ako dito. Okay naman kung ang pupunta ko ay Bible study. Eh kung pupunta ka lang sa mall, pupunta ka lang sa kung saan-saan, you're forgetting 
that these people around us are going to hell. Ano man sasabihin natin? I did nothing like that photographer. Church, let us give our life. Let us give our life. And we will have, and we will be able to find it. If you give our life, if you give your life, there are rewards. Temporal and eternal. The Bible says, And thou shalt find it after many days. Thou shalt find it after many days. Both here and there. Hey, Pastor gave his life. Now he could travel to Macau. Those are the blessings of giving your life. Hey, my pastor, Pastor Nabli, it's like he's storing the, the whole world. Now he's in Dubai, as we speak. He would, he's able to go to Mozambique, go to other countries to visit our missionaries. Those are blessings. He could not have experienced that if he did not give his life for the sake of the gospel. There are blessings if you surrender your life, if you give your life for others to share the gospel with them. Okay? God is not unrighteous to forget your labor. Our God is righteous. Okay? There are blessings here and there eternally. Materially, you will have the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you seek God first, if you serve the Lord first, all these material things will just follow. I did not buy for my lap, um, laptop. I did not buy for my iPad. But somebody gave it. Why? If you seek the Lord first, those blessings will run after you. But if you... You know, if, if you seek material things first and leave God and you will be running after the material things and you will get tired and not be able to touch them. Or if you will have them, you will, have, you will not have no joy. You might be able, you might become rich, but there is no joy to become rich. You see, if you seek God first, there are blessings. If you serve the Lord, there will be blessings that will come to you. God is a God of justice. I remember me and my wife, we were about to get married and we had a joint account. And it's my prayer that I will be able to bring my wife to give her a, a good wedding, you know, so we had a joint account. But when Pastor Nabli preaches about the need for the Bible, the Bible was were free from U.S. But the, you know, yung pamasahi, the fair, uh, there's a need, there were a need, uh, 300,000 pesos. And while Pastor Nabla was preaching on that, the Holy Spirit was telling me, Bigay mo na. The Holy Spirit was saying, Give it. What am I going to give? Yung ipon mo. Sabi ko, pangkasal namin to. Hindi pa natatapos yung... Hindi ko kaya eh. Talagang pinipilit eh. Ako ng madal na spirit ko eh. Hindi ko kaya na pigilan. And tumawag ko kay Mrs. Di ba tapos yung service? And I said, Mahal, uh, there's a need for a Bible. The Bible are free, but the fare for it to be uh, shipped into the Philippines, it will cost 300000 Would it be okay if we give our uh, e-pod okay, and my during that time, uh, she said, hey, you give it. And I told her, it would be a good testimony to our future apo. 
that we will be de telling them we don't have a lavish marriage, marriage celebration because we give it to the church so that people can have many Bibles. And you know, I thought, I, I, I called her pastor, I said, Pastor, would it be okay if we'll, I will get married and Jen and I will get married in the pastor's office, in your office? And his pastor said, her pastor said, no, <laughs> there must be a celebration, there must be a, a preparation. I said, I was, you know, I was, I almost had a heart attack because I no longer have any money. But you know what? People will just come to me without me telling them they would give this, thousand this, thousand this. Yung kasal namin, mas bongga pa doon sa aming inaasahan. We're able to have 300 people during our wow. wedding. Mas bongga pa doon sa aming pinaplano. The Lord provided. I just don't know. Uh, may iyak ako doon sa makasal namin. Dahil akala ko hindi ko na mabibigyan si Mrs. ng ganong uring kasal. Yes, you know, you cannot outgive God. Amen. If you give something unto the Lord, whether it be your life, your time, your money, the Lord, He will replenish it. Okay? He will give more. So if your church needs 300,000 or a church lot for your anniversary, don't be afraid to give. If you have some amount in the bank, don't be afraid to, to withdraw it and give it to the church. And you will see the hand of God. You will see. Why don't you try? Perhaps you haven't tried him. If it invites, he said, prove me. But it's not only in tithes. Okay? How much more if you give 30 or whatever you have at the bank, give it to the church for the need of the church, you will see the provision of the Lord. And the more that you will thank, you, you will see His hand. Okay? Makikita niyo po ang kamay ng Diyos. Siguro sa atin, konti pa lang ang nakikita natin kamay ng Diyos dahil konti pa lang naman ang pananampalatayan natin. Okay? But regardless, kung ito'y hindi niya ibigay kaagad-agad, ang sabi kasi dyan, you will find it after many days. Many days means time to wait. Probably, God will give you some uh, months or year before He will give the return. Okay, before you will, he will give the, you know, triple your, your giving. But, nevertheless, God will give what you have given. More or beyond what you have given. Just trust Him. And if you give your life, the more. Okay? Not only treasure, but your life for the sake of these nations. We have 195 nations. Who will volunteer? Yeah. Like Isaiah, volunteer. Hear my Lord, I am willing to die for the people of Africa. I am willing to die for the people in Congo. I am willing to die for the people in Zambia. I am willing to die for the lepers. I am willing to die for whom you would like to give your life. It's a worthwhile, you know, cause. Eh, sa ating pagagamitin ang buhay nyo? Where are you? Where are you going to use your life? I mean, Sister Asta, I'm so happy that she's here. And she's young. She has her own dreams, but she's here. People whom she's not really familiar with, living in a third world country from first class to third world. Uh -huh. okay. It only takes 
you know, faith to do that. Okay? What about you? Kailan yung bibigay ng buhay mo? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 We're about to finish. It says there, Give a portion to seven. A portion of your life should be given to others. It should not be limited to yourself alone. People must benefit from your life. Not only one, not only your relative, not only your immediate family, but strangers must have your life. Your life must be a portion distributed to other people. Your time, your money must be distributed to other countries. If you stay here in the Philippines and <coughs> you want to distribute your life to other <coughs> people, different countries, you can do so by giving to the missionaries. And you can do so by supporting many missionaries so that there will be more missionaries to send out and more people will hear the gospel. Amen. You can do that. Give a portion of your life to seven. Okay? And also to eight. Seven is the number of perfection, meaning quota. Pag nakakota ka na, oh, ito na yung missionary na sinusuportan namin. Marami na. Eh, stop na kami. No, ang sabi dyan, also to eight. Eight is the number of beginning. It's the number of continuity. Meaning, don't stop. Continue. Begin again. Kung nakakota ka na, gumawa ka pa. Do the extra mile as the Lord Jesus Christ said. Naintindihan po ba natin? Amen. And to make the point well illustrated, there was a man, this is his first story, how long you have watched Cinder's Feast? Wow. Nakanood mo na po, Cinder's Feast. Napakaganda, di ba? Cinder's Feast. It is, it's a true story of a man who purchased 1,200 Jewish people during the time of the World War II. Okay, when the Jewish people were being murdered by Hitler, this man, Schindler, purchased 1,200 Jews, one dollar each, from Hitler. Okay, during the time that after the World War II, these people came to him. Okay, this 1,200 people came to him and he was able to see the list of these people. Okay? Nakita niya yung listahan. Kaya nga tawag ko ang Settler's List. Listahan ng kanyang mga binilig or iniligtas mula sa kamay ni Hitler. Okay? That was the list. And these people came to him to thank him. And they gave him a ring. Okay? As a sign of gratitude, a token of gratitude. And while they were coming to him, showing him the leaves, you know what he mumbled? I could have done more. I could have done more. I could have bought more people. Habang siya umiiya. Nakita niya yung kanyang sasakyan. Lumapit siya. Sabi niya, this car could have bought more Jewish. Ten more people. Ten more Jewish. And he had his pin, a gold pin, and he said, this pin could have bought two Jewish people. Persons. He was crying. All he could mumble was, I did not do enough. Church, there are, we have so many exes. Ang sabi niya, marami siyang ginastos. Ang dami niyang pera na nagastos. 
sa mga walang kwentang bagay. Eh, sabi niya, kung alam ko lang, sana yung pera na yun na ginastos ko na pagkarami-rami, ginastos ko lang sa bar kung ano-ano, sana nagamit yun, makabili ng iba pang hudyo, maligtas sila. Church, the same with us. We could help send more missionaries so that more people could hear the gospel. Pero nasa ang ating mga barta moneta. Where is our treasure? Saan na pupunta? Sa mga walang kwenta gastuse. May bagong cellphone, di mo naman kailangan ng Vivo 25, di pili ka magkikiusok. Hindi mo naman kailangan ng malaking TV, bibili ka ng 50 inches. Sana yung may bibigay mo sa church na babawasan dahil marami kang gastusin na wala naman pakinabang para sa gawa. We could do more. We can do more. We have 195 countries. In the ABC, there are only 156 missionaries. Akala natin marami na yun. Maliit lang yun compared mo sa 8 billion population ng mundo. But we, could, we can send more if you will also help more. Okay? Give more to the church. To the need of the church, your university, a mission fund, whatever the Lord leaves expenses, the Lord gives to your pastor on a project that the Lord impressed upon his heart. You support him for the cause of the ministry.